Robert Shields and Loreen Yarnell were married in a public mime ceremony in San Francisco, with 5,000 citizens and the mayor bearing witness. Loreen, a dancer, taught him dance, and Robert taught her mime. And together, they became Shields and Yarnell. We took a tour around Robert and Loreen's home and discovered that fantasy is very much a part of the household. But you've got more toys than most of us. Look, look. This is a doll from the 1800s. It's, you do a real close-up on that. Where did you get that? I got this in auction in, in, in England, and I uh, there was like five people bidding for it, and it's... it's I just, it's, it's so it's a life one of a life. Piece. It's 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 like it's alive. Yeah, it, it kind of is. It's like there was a movie or something where where, where a room full of toys sleuth. came to life. Was one that night. sleuth? There was yeah. many movies like that. I can that. see that happening in that room. Yeah, it does at night, you know. It does. Oh yeah, yes it does. Tell me about it. It just I close my eyes and I see everything moving. It really does. Ladies and gentlemen, Shields and Yardell. Shields and Yarnell, on stage in two minutes, please. We're kind of a strange twosome. I mean, you know, being mime and being quiet all the time, when we're, you know, it gives us a lot of room to want to speak. In other words, we're, we're always so quiet, we never get to say anything. So it's nice to have an opportunity to talk. In the silent world of mime, the names Shields and Yarnell ring out loud and clear as the best-known duo in that physical art form. <laughs> Loreen Yarnell was a dancer until she met Robert Shields and they were married ten years ago. Robert had made a name for himself stopping traffic on the streets of San Francisco and he soon rendered Loreen speechless as well. For me, I've always been a mime. I didn't know it. And so the mime just kind of fell in place. It is a very disciplined art. We work four hours a day just to stay in shape and to practice our moves. We're so in tune with each other on stage. Um, if he's off one day, I'm on, or I'm off less he's, he's on. But when we're on together, it's wonderful. What are the difficulties involved when you work so closely together and you also have a very close personal relationship? It's very, very hard. It's wonderful at the same time um, because we're so close and we understand. We don't have to come home and and talk about, you know, gosh, what hard day I had. I mean, we understand our days, but we also have to get away from each other so we have individual lives also because you become so close. You almost own each other, but you know each other's time, so you have to find your own space. I've had animals ever since I was a little girl. I had chickens and dogs and cats and horses, and it's just part of my life, and I think without them, I, I'd be very lost. My whole existence is toys, and I have a room in this house that's filled with antique toys. And everything from turn-of-the-century wind-ups to porcelain dolls to jack-in-the-boxes. And there's about five, 6,000 antique toys in this one room, and I go in there every day, and I go in a whole other world. life pass by 
and only once in a long while can they step out of the window and join the parade. Today is their chance. These two will search out new friends, live out their fantasies, eke out of these hours some adventure and fun. Time is short, though. They must be back in the toy store before darkness falls. We gotta step out of that window. We gotta break free, gotta take a chance. Never a glance behind. You'll be surprised what we find. Laugh a bit louder We might just find All our worries are gone We just gotta wander around Like toys on the town By the way, none of the strangers Our toys will meet are actors or setups They are simply the unsuspecting Unrehearsed street people of New York Shields and Yarnell? Fifteen seconds are curtain shields and Yarnell.
And now it's time to smile with America's favorite couple, the Clinkers. up close together.
let me see what life's about. Oh, I was trying to sing a romantic song. Do you mind? I know. What do you think got my horse so frisky? Oh, boy. Come on, who's put up there? Hey, hey, hey. Feed my horse. Wait a Look, he's hungry. Look at those bones. Wait a minute. Feed him. You do know that this is not the, 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 the mime spot. This is... I'm not going to feed an imaginary horse. Of course I know it, but my horse don't know it. Ha, <laughs> ha. Come on, look at him. He's hungry. Come on, yeah, partner. Feed your, ho feed your horse. Here feed you him. go, horsey. Then you'll leave. That's not his mouth. That's his mouth. Yeah. That's his ear. That's his there. That's his mouth okay, right there. Good. Feed him good. good. Come on. Come on. Come on, buddy. Come on, partner. Come on. I've always been fascinated with uh, um, the guys at Disneyland, the animatronics, because they're like robots being people, and I'm a person being a robot. And like, they're, they're like, they all have air in them, you know? They have like tubes, and they're all worked for. You mean Lincoln? Yeah, animatronics oh, yeah. at Disney. Yeah. yeah, Lincoln, you know, Dave. And also in Disney World, all the presidents. But they work like this, you know, like. Well, hi, Merv. It's you suddenly get a very was. eerie feeling about you. you this is this is um, this is um, 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 a person being a robot. Okay, so this is completely different. This is a person being is, a robot. Yeah, this is that was a um, robot Machine. trying to be a person. Right. This is a person being <laughs> a robot. <laughs> we got it. Okay. Watching, you go, my God, it's not real. 
you know? Oh, it's kind of magic. You know, magic. And I come in here at night, and I see all these glass eyes staring at me, you know? And I think when I leave the room, they all get off their shelves and their perches, and they all come alive and dance around. While Robert is often found in the company of his miniature friends, Lorene spends most of her free time in the backyard of their rambling ranch-style home, where she's mistress of her own personal zoo. It's very clear that Lorene's second love is her animals. Aside from the three goats, who are soon to become my very close, intimate friends, Lorene has kept a menagerie of chickens, dogs, pigs, and horses, some of which she's shown nationally. Oops, I'm sorry. Oh, look at him! Animals are beautiful because they, they give love and they don't, they don't ask anything in return. They're real. And uh, that's all they want is love, as long as you treat them good and you feed them and care for them. They just want love. I like love. <laughs> I like love. <laughs> like most entertainers, Shields and Yarnell travel a lot, spending at least two weeks of every month on the road or on a stage somewhere. This year, they even took their mime to China. It's not always easy to keep both a professional and a personal relationship working smoothly, but Lorene and Robert intend to keep trying. I have so much love and respect for Robert, and I have respect for him on the set, but there's two different lifestyles. Um, when, when we are constantly, constantly working in, the, in that pressure, you know, it's very hard. You have to look it's at each other. 24 hours a day. You gotta look at each other and just calm down and just say, I know you, or, or sometimes, this is it, I know you. <laughs> Is an offer too good to be true? Reincarnation, right over the phone. That's right, right over the privacy of your phone. We'll tell you who you've been. Here's a happy caller. My life has never turned out so good, and I get sick when I eat Italian food. I now know why. I was Mussolini. That's right, by finding out who you've been, you can change who you're gonna be. Here's another happy caller. Ever since I was a little boy, I had a feeling I've been Cleopatra. Now I know I was. Call our past life hotline. Our skills operators are waiting for your call. Past life? Hi, I'm Greg. Greg, you were Elvis in your last life. Gee, thanks. Now I have all the confidence I need to get the job I really want. Call now and get this handsome, shockproof, pre-Alantian wristwatch. Sedona is not only beautiful, it's also a place where artists gather and work. Artists like Robert Shields. His main artistry used to be mime and television. You may remember his Shields and Yarnell variety show back in the late 70s. But these days, the master mime has turned to new artistic endeavors, and he makes his home and gallery right here in Sedona. Well, I always was a, a sculptor and a painter. Even when I was doing Shields and Yarnell and I'm working in the street, I always like, you know, was doing artwork. So the mime just hit in, became very famous, and I had to put the other to sleep for a long time. When I moved to Sedona, I really concentrated on developing my art, and it's just blossomed. I came to Arizona 14 years ago and from Los Angeles and uh, I came here to pursue another career, a career in art. Before I was a mime, I was an artist. To date, he's produced more than 1,100 pieces in metal, pewter, wood and bronze. I'm Robert Shields. Hi. Paul. <laughs> Paul, nice to meet you. And marketing his art is something that comes naturally to him. And I love to meet the people and sign there. If they buy a piece, I always sign it for them. You know? And I always perform for him a little bit. Robert Shields' talent has taken him all over the world, but he says he's enjoying his new life and career here in Arizona. This is 
a really non-pretentious place. People don't care who you are here. Every time you wake up in this environment, you just go, I just, I'm so glad I'm alive and living in Sedona. It's really the land of, of dreams to me. We are thrilled to be joined by Robert Shields himself wow. right now. Okay I, okay, I squealed in delight when I saw you, did I not? Yeah, well, I, you know, what? and you're so beautiful. Look oh, listen, I, I expected him to be old. I well, did, you know, because I remember you from my childhood, but you were telling me you were just a kid then, too. I was, but I have this painting in my attic that just stays the same all the time. You are just your man. Yeah. Aren't you? <laughs> well, look at this. Shields is still doing performance art, and he's doing it with the same level of energy that drove him to the top of the show business ladder. Shields has come a long ways from yeah, his days as one of San Francisco's first street performers, uh, but Shields really seems to have found a home and happiness in his new life in Sedona. I can hear Oak Creek running out there. Yeah, this is a beautiful view out our window here. I guess this was the inspiration you were looking for. Huh? Yeah, this is wonderful. See what everyone's raving about. The one and only Robert Shields Trickster Cafe, one of the trendiest places in town. What better way to spend your evening than with the fabulous food and the magic and artistry of renowned mind Robert Shields. Phoenix Home and Garden says, in a town known for red rocks and art galleries, the Trickster Cafe is an eatery that is its own masterpiece. The Trickster Cafe's delicious and affordable gourmet food will inspire you to eat there again and again. Come taste the magic at the one and only Trickster Cafe. Voted best new restaurant in Sedona. Watch me sell these girls some Christmas ornaments. Now these Christmas ornaments, this is called Cappuccino Man. Our next artist profile is on the famous mime, Robert Shields. Robert Shields has entertained audiences throughout the world for more than 25 years. Recently, Ringley Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus chose Sedona resident Robert Shields for their director of clowns. Shields understands clowning perhaps like no other, discovered by Marcel Marceau at the age of 18. After a short apprenticeship, Robert developed his own style, prying mime loose from its artsy pedestal and putting it in the streets of San Francisco for seven years, entertaining thousands. Robert's talents led him to his own hit television show as one half of the renowned mime duo Shields and Yarnell. He appeared on more than 400 programs, and his original special, Toys on the Town, earned him an Emmy. Around 1993, Robert began transitioning between creative mime and creative artist, with a new passion for designing and handcrafting jewelry and artwork, a reflection of his playful onstage innovation. The public loved his work. He started a retail operation and manufacturing business to meet the demand. Today, you'll find Robert working on a new painting, jewelry design, sculpture, or who knows what. Aren't these great, these paintbrushes? I, I just love these. I just, this, is, this, this painting is called Ascension. You know, I just love to create. You know, my, my passion in life is, is creating, whether it's dancing, whether it's miming, whether it's directing clowns, whether it's designing jewelry, whether it's sculpting castles, where it's, where it's making shamans. It's just, it's fantastic using your body and your mind and your spirit and your heart to create art. 
And what better place to create art than Sedona, Arizona? Besides running my company here in Sedona, which has, you know, as you know, four retail stores, and we do metal, wood, pewter, jewelry, and we have our own silver casting studio here in Sedona. It's, it's a pretty full life, but very exciting and very rewarding. Robert is considered one of the premier artists in the Southwest. Come see Robert at his studio at the Y and become part of his celebration of imagination. A blast from the past. Take a look at this video. Okay. You remember our next guest from the popular team of Shields and Yarnell, the MyMac that exploded onto the scene in the 70s, appearing on all sorts of shows, and they also performed in Las Vegas and all over the place. Very, very talented. And this morning, half of the act, Robert Shields. You know, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a little bit afraid. Oh, no, no. But I've got to tell you something, Jeanine. It's so early that I, I got ready to just, I just didn't realize. Okay. Where <laughs> and also, who made this? What is this about? This is like a beach ball thing that you got to, you know, yeah. get it out of here. It Were was, you, I, I have to ask you, with, with you doing this, this type of stuff, and when I tried to shake his hand, I was just like all over the room. See, there he goes again. When, when you were a child, I just want to know, I gotta go were, down were you stairs. a normal child? How did this all start? <laughs> oh, no, I wasn't. I didn't talk till I was like four. Really? Yeah, they put me away about three times. Then I got out. <laughs> See, I knew. Yeah. I knew there was something with it this child. It was childhood. like me and Martha Stewart. You and Martha? Yeah. yeah, Martha, I've always thought. She's Haven't you? <laughs> I think so. Yeah, yeah, just... yeah Martha's out there. <laughs> but people that are a little bit more creative and a little bit out there are sometimes very, very artistic, yeah. too. And um, these are beautiful items. Did oh, you do yeah. these yourself? I did. This is like, show me the moon. Oh, this is this a Christmas is beautiful. ornament. Beautiful. It's also a nice comb for. So you bird. are. So you are. But but all in all, in all seriousness, you are an artist, and you paint, and you design all of these, right? Yes. How I, neat. I, I don't paint all of them, but I design all of them. <laughs> this is the hand of the cat. Isn't that fun? Do a that close is up on wonderful. That. And you know, I have to tell you, a lot of these have southwestern, southwest in inspiration, right? And you, I mean, yeah. You love the southwest. You live here in Arizona, right? I live in Sedona. So where can people get these, your beautiful ornaments and your beautiful pieces? 